Hey everybody! Joy here. Over here in this chair. See me? <laughs> I wanted to show you where I come in the middle of the night. I always wake up about 2 o'clock. And then I can't go back to sleep till 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock. So, I don't know, 5 or 6 days ago, I decided I wanted to finish this quilt. Remember the quilt? The Carpenter's Wheel or the Carpenter's Star. It's got two different names. But it's the one that I made for Jeffrey. Remember my friend Jeffrey? Well, somehow I think I've lost my friend Jeffrey. I'm not positive, though, because I just found out there's something wrong with my phone. And I'm praying it's just my phone. <laughs> but I have a friend. Her name is Deb, and she lives in Missouri. And I received a really nice gift. Remember I showed you the clapper with the little removable pin cushion in it and the journal that she sent me? And I sent her three, four, five different texts telling her thank you and I really loved it. I was going to put it in my RV, but she never answered me. And I thought, well, why isn't she texting me back? And so then I finally emailed her and I said, I've been sending you texts. Are you getting them? She said, yeah, I've been texting you back. I've texted you back every time. Well, my phone right now, I don't have it with me, but right now, this is days, this is my birthday, days, days, days later, still no text from Deb. So, I emailed her, and I said, I don't know what's going on, but I didn't get any text back from you, and um, she emailed me and said, yes, she did send me text, and so then I said, well, I told you I can't call her because she has classes all the time, so she said, I'm having a class right now, I'll call you after the class, well, that was three days ago. And she didn't call, and she didn't call, and she didn't call, and she didn't call. And I thought, what the heck? So yesterday, Jerry came to find me, and he said, you need to call Deb. And I said, why? And he said, she's been trying to call you. She's called you five times. And my phone was right there, right there, right with me. And no phone call. And looked on my phone, no recent phone calls, no phone call from anybody, no text. So I called her, and when I called her, the call went through and I could talk to her. And so then when we were through talking, I said, Deb, let's hang up, and you call me right back, and let's see if it works. So she called me back, nothing, just nothing. And so she ended up calling Jerry, who was right there with me, and she said, hand your phone to Joy. And so I don't know what's wrong with my phone. Also, I had the same problem with Becky this weekend. I was sending her texts, and she was never answering them. And I'm like, well, what the heck? Why didn't Becky respond to me? And so I thought, oh, she's just busy. She's, you know, this quilt shop, that quilt shop, all, quilt shop all over the U.S. And so I thought she was just too busy. Well, when she finally got here, I showed her on my phone all that. She said, have you been ignoring me? And I'm like, what do you mean have I been ignoring you? I've sent you all these texts. You haven't even responded to me. And so she showed me her phone. She had none of my texts. And it was just so bizarre. It was like a couple hours later, she heard this noise, this beep, this tone, whatever, on her phone. And she looked at it, and there was my text that I had sent days ago. Just came to her. Strange things going on, you guys. So I'm hoping and praying that that's what's going on with Jeffy, because I have not heard from him for, my gosh, over a month. And I've been texting him. I've sent him lots of texts, but he doesn't text me back, so I'm assuming he doesn't get them. But the point is, I made this for a class that he teaches. And you have to make a quilt, and then he shows you how to do all the quilting on it. So, since I haven't heard from him, and I'm assuming he just, you know, has gone on with his life and doesn't need a joy in it anymore. So I come up here in the middle of the night, and I just sit in this chair. And I stare at this quilt. Because, of course, I don't have Jeff to help me, so I don't know how I'm supposed to quilt the top of it. So I want to show you what I do. Okay, we'll just play like, I just made it because I felt like making it. And it has nothing to do with anybody else, okay? <laughs> Although I really do like it. So I sit here and I stare at it. And, of course, I see the two stars sticking up at me. And I have a computer, and I know I can stick something in the squares, and I can stick something in the triangles, and I can stick something in the sashing, and I can stick, not the sashing, but the little border, and I can stick something in the big border. But I don't really want just a bunch of stuff stuck in it here and there. I want it to flow. Somehow, flow is even a, a, a term. <laughs> 
So I'm going to show you what I came up with. Middle of the night, two nights ago, sitting here, I thought this is what I'm going to try. So, for those of you who asked for a quilting video, I'm getting ready to show you how I determined maybe how I'm going to quilt this quilt. Okay? I'm going to move the camera, I'm going to get some uh, tools I need, and I'll be back. Can you see me way over here? I have no idea what the camera can see except the corner of this quilt. I have a very long ruler. I have a dry erase marker. I have my big piece of cardboard I'm going to unfold and put underneath this because I need a firm surface to write on. And I don't want to write on my carpet. So I keep this folded up in my RV, and I'm going to undo it and unfold it, and I'm going to put it underneath this quilt. Now this quilt is a square, and it's exactly the same all over. Let me get the quilt out of the way. So I'm going to put this underneath this quilt because I want to practice my designs, okay? I hope you can see me. I have no idea if you can or not. I'll have to come check. Got my ruler. Here's the next thing you have to have. You have to have a window. This is plexiglass. I bought it at Lowe's. It's just a clear piece of plexiglass, and I have put masking tape all the way around it so I can write on it. I wish it was twice as big. <laughs> so I can write on it and see if I like the design or not before I sew it on with thread. Hope you can hear me okay. I'm clear across the room from you. But I want to start. Let me see. This quilt... This is one quarter goes from here to the point over to there and back. And my board actually is not big enough. Yes, okay. So we have a firm surface like the three little pigs. The house that's built upon the rock. And that's where I want to draw. So I'm putting the glass right there. So I'm going to draw. It was 3.30 in the morning one night, and I thought, you know what? I don't want a bunch of thick floral stuff stuck in all these white boxes here. I want the star to be the star. <laughs> so I am just going to do all around the star shapes, and um, I don't know how I will do inside the star shape, but whatever it is, it'll be simple. Hmm, I'm not worried about that right now. I'm worried about everything that isn't blue. That's what I'm, I'm fixing to draw. Everything that isn't blue, what am I going to do with it? What I thought I would do is make it look like the stars are shining. Hey, it could be my shine quill. I should name it Shine. That just came to me. I think I'm going to call this shine. <laughs> now, I don't know if these lines can line up. That's my next problem. So let's see what we can do. I want it to look like the quilt is shining. So, you do not ever, ever want to write on your quilt. Because if you do, <laughs> you will be sorry. I have done it before. All right, so there's one of the sparkles. See the sparkle? So the next thing I have to do is figure out how far apart do I want the sparkles to be from each other. <coughs> and this is not a good ruler to do that with, so I'm going to go change rulers. This ruler is very long, and it's metal, and I got it from Lowe's, and I really like it, but I need one that has one-inch marks or half-inch marks or two-inch marks so I can move over, and then I need one that I can see through. So this was not a good choice. I have to go get another one. So here's my next longest ruler. 
it's clear I can see through it it has lines I can line up on all of my star shiny rays and it's a creative grids non-slip ruler and it is how many inches long 36 inches long how about that 36 and a half I hate it when rulers have a half inch on the edge I do not know what that's about I think it's a quilting thing but I still don't like it so when I'm on my long arm machine I have a lot of rulers and this ruler won't work it has to be a thicker ruler but I won't be able to do from there to there on my long arm I'll only be able to do from there to there maybe maybe not even that far all right I'm gonna make these one inch apart So what I'm going to do is take a picture of this, then I'm going to erase that piece of glass, and then I'm going to come over here and draw maybe if I wanted to do something different, and I'm going to take a picture of that. It's hard to show you what I'm doing on this piece of glass here. You can see my lightning fast mind <laughs> finally figured out I could bring this thing in here to the table since it's not 2 a.m. and I'm not half asleep in a chair. So I've been drawing different things and I found something I think I really like instead of the stripes because I can put this in all of the white triangles. I can make the triangle be four triangles or two triangles or one triangle. And so I'm really liking this. So I thought I'd let you watch me do it just in case you're like I used to be and like, how did they do that? <laughs> all right. This is fun. This is so fun. Now remember, when you're using your long arm machine or your home sewing machine, it's going to sew much smoother than you can draw it. The thread sewing and the needle going up and down gives you some control. So let's see if I can show you now. I don't know if I can talk and do it. You go floop, 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 up, down, over to the corner, up, a circle, back, a point, down, and over to the corner and then you come over here and you do the same thing now 
I don't know how to make sure that my floops flop in the same direction on each one of these. I kind of just do them as I go. So if they turn out going the same way, it's going to be a miracle. Oop, oop, oop. So go here to the circle, stop. Go back, stop. Go up, make a feather. Go back, stop. Now see, I made a little floopy hoopy there. So, I'm going to get my diaper and erase that. If I can find my diaper. Oh, that is really pretty. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm liking this a lot. I really am liking this a lot. I've had it over there on my whiteboard for years that I might do this someday. And now the day is here. Okay, circle back. Go up again like you're going to make a circle, but don't go all the way. Then hump. I did it again. I did it again. See, you have to really think. Let's do it one more time. You don't want to do it when you're doing it with the thread. All right. Circle. Stop. Halfway back. Stop. Start to make another one. Stop. Go back down. Stop. Then up and over. <clears throat> you don't want to make another hump. You just want to go up and over. See? Now we're going to go the other way. Circle, half, floop, down, and down. Ah! Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? Now you have to make sure you don't color off of this glass. If you color off this glass, you are going to cry, cry, cry. <laughs> so here I have a square. There I had a square. I turned this square into four triangles. This square, I'm going to turn into two triangles. So I need to know where the center is of this triangle. And I can either center it this way, or I can center it this way, or I could turn it into four triangles. But I don't want my quilting to be so heavy in one place and not very heavy in another. So I'm going to need a ruler to figure out where the center of this is. Is that how I want to do it? I think so. So half circle, stop, go up again, stop, go over to the edge, make another one, stop. I'm kind of running out of room here. Now see, I did run out of room there. So I'm just going to erase that, and I'm going to remember when I'm on my long arm that this one will have some technical difficulties involved. <laughs> I may have to turn the triangle the other way. I wonder if I should turn it the other way. How do you determine that? No, I want it turned that way. I'm pretty sure I want it turned that way. Okay, now let's cooperate with me when I'm making a video. If I don't talk, I can do it a lot better. I promise you that. Okay. What if I went around all four sides of that and I didn't make it a triangle. Huh? Yeah, let's try that. Let's make this one be a square. See how that works out. I'll start here. This way you can make a bigger circle. Remember, you got four of them to put in here. You want to watch somebody do this just as easy as breathing for her. Gosh, can I remember her name? Oh, look, that's really pretty. I like that. So that's not going to be a triangle. That's going to be a square. That is gorgeous. In my opinion, my friends. I like it. I like it. I like it. And that is what I'm going to do. I am not going to plug in any computerized designs. I'm going to do it myself. It's going to be a custom quilt made by me. And then all of these stars are just going to be ditched and then a half inch inside that. So that's how I'm going to do it. What does that mean, Joy? That means I'm going to sew in the ditch, 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 and my pen, of course. Uh, you can't see it on this dark color. Ditch, and then I'm going to come in maybe an inch. Maybe an inch. An inch, an inch. I don't know if that'll work, but we'll see. I want an inch from there. An inch. 
and inch from there an inch you got rulers that you use on your long arm that you can do this with and an inch okay so that would be the inside triangle and my hands are going all over my marks I'm sorry you can't see it any better but that's probably how I'll do that and I will have definitely matching thread I will use white on white out here on these white ones maybe a cream maybe a cream or a light beige but in these I will do all of a uh, maybe a variegated maybe a variegated it will take me forever to do the uh, triangles like that because you have to do them with a ruler and if I could just find a continuous design like this you can do these oh just go 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 and never have to change your machine it's so easy so the heck with the stripes I don't like them anymore <laughs> I like this instead I'm going to show you something that's very, very helpful. This is just a plain old ordinary everyday Rolodex. And I was over there on my glass. You've all seen me with my glass drawing designs today. So then I thought, oh, I'm going to go get my Rolodex because I just thought up a new design I've never made before. So I thought, oh, I'll show you my Rolodex. So what I do is I put labels there. So you have to have bigger. You have to have some big cards, some little cards. So I have animals, and then anything that's an animal. I think I have one animal. <laughs> I have one animal. It's a mouse. <laughs> then I have borders. Now when I walked over here, that's a really cool border there. When I walked over here, I had a design all picked out. It was a sawtooth feather, I think. But of course I can't find it now. A feathered swirl, a heart. That's a cool border. That's a cool border. Looks like little bums, doesn't it? <laughs> a hook and feathers. A leaf, a chubby leaf. Oh my gosh, I can do that all day long. I'm good at making the S curve. Pumpkin seeds. A rooster plume. I did this on a, on a quilt that I made for my daughter. She doesn't even like it. I spent, oh, it's some of my best work I have ever done. and She doesn't even like it. Here is a scalloped swirl. So you get the idea. I wish I could find the one that I brought this over here to copy. I made that one up too. Swirl with a spike. But you can't remember these things if you don't write them down somewhere. Oh, and I put this on a, uh, a quilt too. I think that was on the rooster quilt because I thought it looked like rooster feathers. But that's from Jamie. That's one of Jamie. Oh, I can't think of his last name. There's an ant. I drew that ant all by myself. I did the bumblebee all by myself. The butterflies. I know they're not great, but I was trying. Dragonfly. A fly. And there's all kinds of tutorials. And you can use them. The ladybug is lots of fun to do. Continuous ladybug. I practiced on that for days. Well, I wish I could find this fill. This <laughs> design I brought this in here to do. You would think it would be under feathers. Anyway, you get the idea. So I found the one I want to copy. Sawtooth. And I think this was a Jamie, but I don't remember Jamie's last name. But Jamie's amazing and does awesome quilts. I think he has an A1 machine. So I'm going to try to do this kind of a feather. This is a feather. You can do a thousand shapes with what's called a feather. So let me see if I can do it. Okay. And you can watch me. You got to have time for this. You have to allow yourself time. If you're in a hurry and you're trying to get this done lickety split, use your computer designs. Because it takes a lot, a lot of thinking and a lot of time to do this part right here that I'm doing. It takes hours and hours and hours to do what I'm doing today. My whole day is just to do this. 
and hopefully before the day's over get this top pinned on but if i don't i'll work on it again tomorrow and look what i found by the way because all of my expo markers were drying up i bought these to go with my blackboard i have a black glass board you know what i mean it's it's that sandwich board thing i bought and one side's white and one side's black well none of my markers would show up on the black so i bought this to show up on the black so i just found them and decided to try one it's called a window marker you can mark on your real windows and it will come off with water but this is like paint you have to squishy the tip up and down and then you have to shake it a whole bunch and finally it comes out and it comes out a lot but it writes real smooth. I like it much better than those Expo markers. So let's try it at the Hyatt with the sawtooth feather. So the first thing you have to do is figure out where your spine is going to be. And I'm going to play like mine goes like this, straight across here. Then I'm going to start making the sawtooth feathers. So you're going to go, let me see if I can get this to, to write. You've got to push it up and down. We're going to make our little curve, then come out, and then go here, 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 here. <laughs> back to our spine. You always come back to your spine. And we're going to come up here and do it again. Oops, see, that looks horrible. That looks absolutely horrible. So I'm going to erase it. And I'm going to start over. See, this stuff is really wet. Sure don't want to get that on my quilt. So let's start over. Curve. Don't make them so big, Joy. Come back to the spine. Go up this way. How about that? Come back to the spine. Curve. Hope you can see me. Okay, that didn't turn out too good. Come back to the spine. Let's go up this way. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? I love it. <clears throat> Pardon my voice, guys. They're not guys, Joy. They're girls. I used to have a guy. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. This kind of matches the one I decided I was going to do. Really, I might change my mind. Can't even remember now what that was. See there, isn't that pretty? And I had it in my little Rolodex. Oh my gosh, I love it. That is so cute. I don't like that one. So I'm gonna erase it. I'm getting too big again. I have a real propensity that's a big word I have a real propensity to get too big look at that that is super cute I like that a lot so found that on my Rolodex called the sawtooth feather so now that's how I would do it in a triangle so now I need to come up here and see how I would do it in a square and I also need to figure out how to do it so it stays the same proportion. You don't want this quilted really, really, really tight and tense and then come up here and just quilt a big zero like that. <clears throat> you don't want to do that. You want your quilting, I, let's don't say you, I <laughs> want my quilting to be, you know, to follow the same technique, the same thickness, fullness density and of course the blue part is just going to pop out I'm just going to make it be what it is it's not going to have any designs in it it's just going to be stitched in the ditch okay so let's see if we can get this to mark and see what we would do up here you always have to know where your spine is so where's my spine going to be hmm hmm and remember, this is a square. And so you are going to be doing this triangle four times. There's actually two of them right here. So there's two on each side. So you're going to be doing this eight times. So when you come over here to the other sides, you're going to have to remember what you did here because you don't want to like start here doing your saw two stars. 
see because if you did that then it's not going to match and if you're like me and everything has to be matchy see although I like that I like it that way too in fact I like it that way better don't you I like it that way better and I'm running out of ink here let me redo this one little blob because I ran out of ink and then come down here and do a little one no nope, don't have room for a little one see that's your next problem and I'll tell you what I'll do and I take a picture every time I come up with something I take a picture of it because I will need those later my phone's finally started at least making a picture there we go okay so the thing about it is you need to make sure that all four of your sides at least I do <laughs> I want to make sure that when I do my feathers on the opposite side that I don't start down here and go up I want to always make sure I start up here and go down or I want to make sure I start over here in the corner so you have to make sure when you're doing a quilt that's equal equal quarters I'm assuming everybody would want their quarters to all match each other okay so I like this better than this so I'll go ahead and do it again over here I've got blue ink on everything here all right let's try it one more time do not get it on your quilt my friends <laughs> It's really hard to um, keep this flowing without running out. Now this one's kind of uh, sideways. Yeah. This one went kind of goofy. So I would take a picture of my favorite and then I would make sure that I followed that design on each side. See, like that. So I like this one better than this one. Yay! So here I have this diamond shape. There are four of these on the quilt. This is not the center of the quilt. So there's four of these on the quilt. So whatever I do here, I want to be sure I turn it or rotate it in relationship to where it shows up. And so here's one here. There'll be one, there'll be four of these. Okay, so it's something else that I need to pay attention to. So let me see, what can we do here? Let's say we're going to go from the center. Ooh, that is so pretty. Okay, so there's two of them. So if these are coming down to this point, I will want some going to that point, some going to that point, some going to that point, and this is the center. And it will be that way on all four of them. Does that make sense? I really like that. I thought I had this all figured out, exactly what I was going to do, but I think I like this better. <laughs> oh my goodness, you change your mind constantly when you're doing this. Now, here's the next thing. Do I want my curls to all go around like a clock? Do I want some of them to go to the left and some of them to go to the right? Here I have left, left, right, left, right. And right, left, right, left, right, left. So, I don't know. I don't know. See, that's something I need to figure out. Okay, so if this goes into this line right here, I need to make one going into this line right here and going that way. What do you think? Let's try it. And then where would the next one go? The next one would go toward that one. 
it's still going the same way. So that doesn't really do anything. It's still going the same direction. Hmm. Let's try one here going the opposite direction. See? You just play, and you got to enjoy this as part of your quilting journey, my friends. At least I do. Alright, so that one went the opposite direction. So this is left left and this is right right. And so I theoretically should put, I hope I've got you on record. I did a whole bunch of while ago and you already been on record. <laughs> okay, so let's say we're going to turn this the way we turned that one. <clears throat> so we're going to do left left. Right, right, left, left. And so then this will be right, right. You know, if you put on music, it works even better because it gives you the motions. It gives you the rhythm. Okay, so now we've got right, right, left, left, right, right. Or clockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise. So, if that goes to the right and that goes to the left and this goes to the left, so I've got one, two, three, four going that way. So that means these have to go that way, like this. So that didn't really turn out too congruent that, that I can tell. I'm running out of ink, you guys. And you have to learn to be able to quilt all directions. All right, so now I've got one, two, three, four going to the left and one, two, three, four going to the right. What do you think? Now, I just made that up. That was not the way it was when I saw it. When I saw it, it was just a border design. And so you can tell there's no border there. So it has nothing to do with being a border. Let me see if I can find something else to try. All right, dear ones, I'll finish this wherever I was before I put this insert in there, okay? Now see, when I was in the middle of the night and I was looking at it on the floor, I thought, oh, we'll just do stripes everywhere and it looked like the star is sparkling. Well, now I decided that's boring and this is funner. <laughs> <laughs> Becky and Keith came, they did, but we didn't have very much time. Uh, they came Saturday night for dinner, and we had steak and potatoes and veggies and salad and all of that stuff, you know, and we just sat around the kitchen table and talked and talked and talked for about three hours, and then they had to go. <laughs> so, we had a really nice time. Becky showed me some of the fabrics that she got while she was on her Around the United States cruise. No, like it's not a cruise unless you're in a boat tour. I couldn't believe how many miles they drove. But she got some really, really darling fabrics. The funnest thing to me, if I was to do that, is to go to all the different quilt shops because no two quilt shops are alike. Always different, always have different tastes in the fabrics that they like, always have different arrangements in how they set up their store, always sell different kinds of machines. Oh, I just think that was really, really a cool trip she got to go on. And how precious of her husband to go with her to all of those places. I don't think my husband, as much as he loves me, would even do that. I did ask him if he would spend one day, if they have the quilt festival. Uh, because of COVID, we're thinking maybe it's going to get canceled again. But if they don't cancel the quilt show, I asked Jerry, I said, would you come with me, please, just one day? <laughs> so we'll see that's the end of October and it's my most unfavorite time of the year Halloween we don't do Halloween I don't know how any Christians do Halloween that's Satan's high holiday and the most horrible things you can imagine happen on that day 
So we don't do Halloween. <laughs> I pray for the children all day and all night. So this is going on my long arm. I already have the bottom on. You want to see? See here? The bottom of the quilt, the backing is already on. Real pretty colors. And um, I have to go cut a giant, giant, giant piece of fluffy stuff <laughs> to put in it. And you saw the quilt top. So I'm going to go ahead and get it pinned on today. And now that I know what I'm going to quilt it with, I am off and running. So I may have this quilt hanging up on the wall. I don't know what to name it. I want to call it Jeffrey something or other. Blues for Jeff. I think I'm going to call it Blues for Jeff because I made it for him with his instruction and I love it. I mean, he even told me, move this triangle here and this triangle there and put this color here and this color there. Just, he has an amazing artistic talent and I miss him so, so much. Um, you know, COVID got over with, and so he's on an airplane all the time now, traveling all over the place, so I think I've lost him. <laughs> but anyway, if you all ever have a chance to take a class from his, his name is Jeffrey Yasenchuk, Y-A-S-E-N-C-H-O-K, Yasenchuk. And he has a website, I think it's called Mandala, M-A-N-D-A-L-A, quilting, mandalaquilting.com. Just search it, and it'll probably come up. And he's on the APQS um, Facebook thing, I think, or the APQS quilt shop. I don't know. I've lost him myself, you guys. <laughs> I'm just saying he is a really talented teacher and quilter and artist, okay? Just in case you see his name come up. I searched all over the quilt shop teachers for him. There's a thousand teachers going to be there. And he is not on it. Uh, the other people that I know that I thought, oh, I'd love to take a class. I knew this girl named Jolene several years ago and she was going to be a quilt teacher she's not there so I don't know I was kind of sad because all the other people are already have taken their classes so <laughs> years and years ago okay dear ones I'm going to say goodbye for today sorry I didn't get a video of Becky the, the time just went by too fast and and we weren't up here you know my stuff's all upstairs my cameras my lights my everything and we were going to uh, make a pair of pants for her from the SureFit design. She told me she wanted me to do that, so I was all set up to do it. But th there's just too much time. Just There's just not enough time. <laughs> yuck, yuck, yuck. We had to talk, 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 talk. And next thing, it's like, we've got to go. So you'll see her. Go over there to um, Power Tools with Thread. And you can watch Becky all you want. I love you all, but i got to go. i got to get this quilt on. And, of course, I'll show it to you when I get it on here and I start quilting it and everything, okay? But bye for now.